you would uh, bow your heads with me. Dear God, we come to you now, and we just ask that you speak directly to us, dear Lord. And uh, the message that you have prepared for each and every one of us, let, let us hear the message and let us go out and live it. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So uh, I'm going to talk this morning about, um, and, and we're going to carry this on through, um, start some, like some Christmas um, sermons. And this one's going to be the, uh, it's got the, the Christmas story in how inside of this um, um, story here is advice on how to handle um, trials, certain trials. And I don't know what it is about the holidays, but sometimes that can bring out um, trials. It can put us in trials. Um, not, and I tell you this, and you guys know it, not everybody um, looks forward to the holidays. Not everybody enjoys the holidays. They're uh, going through separation or going through um, uh, depression, anxiety. There's uh, all kinds of things that are happening, and there's just... Uh, there's a lot of reasons why people are um, anxious or not happy during the holidays, and there are legitimate reasons. Okay, I think it's easy sometimes just to say, we, you know, you need to grow up or pull, pull, you know put your big boy pants on or whatever, whatever the sayings are, and uh, that's very dismissive, and it's also not healthy and um, can actually be um, counterproductive in their Christian walk. So. Um, this, uh, I'm going out of Luke here this morning, so Luke 1, and I'm going up to, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. He was of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. But she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angels, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, for her, for her her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, this maid servant of the Lord, let, let it be me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Okay, so inside of this, um, believe it or not, is advice on how to handle trials. And um, we're going to look at them this morning. And these are pretty broad ones. So if you see one that connects with you, then uh, my suggestion to you is to go home today, pull up Luke 1 or open up Luke 1 and review this for yourself and pray about what you're going through as let the Bible speak to you in terms of how to handle and get through these struggles. All right. So how we struggle when we don't understand. And this is a, this is a tough one. This is one that, I'll just be honest with you, um, that I have been dealing with lately. And it seems like sometimes um, bad things happen to good people. Okay? And it's a struggle to watch that happen. And it's faithful people, people that are doing it all correctly. And it's not happening, okay? And sometimes I see people who act like they're godless, and they seem, from the outside, 
to be blessed beyond measure. Sometimes that's hard to shore up. And then sometimes I see um, circumstances hit people. And they don't deserve that. But yet they're going to have to deal with that the rest of their lives. And sometimes we are praying and, you know, it's all on God's time. But, you know, sometimes I don't like his time. <laughs> okay? Sometimes we don't like his time. So this is, uh, this is a tough one. And um, I saw a, um, an interview this week with uh, a guy who, um, he has two older children, like I'm saying like eight and six, and they just lost a three-year-old to cancer. And he wrote a, wrote a book about the, you know, the trials and the journey um, of losing that kid and then the aftermath of what, it, what they're going through. And it just came out, so that's why they were, he was making the rounds. And um, the, the, the TV personality who was running the, the interview said, uh, hey, um, I, I always want to know the answer to this, and I don't know if you can help me out. He, said, he asked him, he said, what, what are you supposed to say? When you find someone in a terrible position like this, you know, we don't really know what to say. And he said, well, he said, don't say they're in a better place. We don't want to hear that. Okay. Don't say that all things work out for the good because it doesn't feel like good. And, or, or don't say, you know, like, I understand what you're going through or because you don't. And he said, if you come over to my house and I got dishes in my sink, he's like, do, do my dishes. <laughs> and they were kind of laughing about it, but he was like, I, I'm, I'm being serious. He's like, the, if, if you truly want to help, then actions would be more, like, like help like that. And it, and it doesn't have to be anything spectacular, just help. And, I, and it really struck me because as a, especially as a minister, we want to provide answers and we want to provide, you know, soothing words, but sometimes words, you know, don't cut it. They're not available. And I think this is something that we need to realize is that our actions sometimes are more important than anything we could ever say, all right? And that doesn't have to be anything monumental. It could be just a hug. And it could be just, you know, without words telling them, I'm gonna be here for you, okay? You need to cry, I'll cry with you. If you need to laugh, we'll laugh, and then we'll cry again. But actions speak more. And so this is kind of where Mary is here in this story. And she, she asked, she's like, she doesn't understand. Like, how's this going to happen? I've, you know, I've never done the things that are required to have a child. And uh, this, is, uh, this has been sprung on her. And, you know, she's not of a, of a great age. So she doesn't have a lot of experience in world wisdom, world experience. And I just want you to hear what the angel said. So the Holy Spirit will come upon you, all right? So I think sometimes we talk so much here that about being filled with the Holy Spirit that sometimes we, it kind of loses its pop. But I, I just want to reflect on that Jesus Christ and how he, his number one way to comfort his disciples in his ascension back into heaven was the Holy Spirit. Now that really says something about how powerful and how peaceful and how encouraging the Holy Spirit is. So I think, you know, we talk a lot about the Holy Spirit here. And every morning you have to pray the prayer of emptying so that you can get all the junk out of there. And the Holy Spirit's in there. Let him just feel you have his way with you. Okay? And we, we say that, and maybe we say it too much, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit is a gift straight from God, and to be filled with that is really an amazing thing. And, it, you know, and if we do that right, then 
You can, you can find peace in any kind of situation, and you can find comfort in any kind of trial. And so the first thing we have to do is recognize that we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So in the times when we are dealing with unanswered questions and stuff that doesn't look like justice, it actually looks like injustice, this, this is where we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. We can't rely on us. And then it says that the power of the highest will overshadow you. So once the Holy Spirit is there, then you're subject to the power of God, the Godhead. All right? So you're going to be overshadowed, and that's a good thing if we let the Holy Spirit take over. And it says, therefore also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And here is just a, a general answer for what do we do when we feel like there's no, no legitimate justified answers for what's going on in our lives and we, are, we don't understand. And the answer is rely on Jesus Christ, okay? Through the Holy Spirit. And then also when we feel like this world isn't, just and there's no justice and there's a prevalence of injustice and things are happening to people and to groups of people that don't deserve it and, and people are being persecuted. We might be being persecuted in some kind of way and, and you don't understand why it's happening and you don't understand why you can't get past this. The answer is to rely on Jesus Christ and his guidance. Okay? Because here is in verse 37, the truth of the matter, for with God, nothing is impossible. Let me ask you, just between me and you, you don't have to answer me, but just between me and you, do you live a life that really says that, for with God, nothing is impossible? Do you really live a life with that kind of faith? Do you live a, I mean, we had some blessings here this morning, now it's, okay, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Do you, and, and sometimes we're, we're like, you know, we're like amazed that stuff happens. Yeah, because there's nothing impossible with God. And we need to start living lives of faith, you know, in a, and especially during these times where there's not answers to cling to. We got to cling to something. And usually what we cling to is the fear and anxiety and, and the, the, Anger that comes with not knowing and not having answers. And those are destructive. It's destructive to your spiritual life. It's destructive to your prayer life. That will bleed into your marriage. That will bleed into your work relationships. That will bleed into just who you are if you allow it. And I'm telling you that bitterness is not a good, that's not a good quality. It's not a good personality trait. Bitterness is not. Okay? So we have to start living lives that truly reflect that all things are possible with God and nothing is impossible. Okay, so what about when we're lied about or we're falsely accused of doing something? All right, what's, what's the thing here? And, and it says, now Joseph, her husband, being a just man, this is how Matthew 1, when he found out that she was with child, he didn't, in, this, in, in the word betrothed, that's a cultural Jewish thing, and that was the engagement. But in all practicality, they were actually con contractually married, all right? And so he knew that he wasn't the dad, so he figured something was going wrong here, right? And they didn't have Jerry Springer or Maury Povich back then to get down to their exact answers. Forget, pray for me. Forgive me for that one. <laughs> All right. Jerry, Jerry. No, I'm sorry. Okay. But they didn't, they didn't have that back then, and he knew it wasn't him. So, you know, what's, what's his answer? He accuses her of doing something wrong, and he's going to divorce her. Okay. And so she has been, you know, put in a position where she feels like she's falsely accused. But then here is the, here is the answer, the angel tells her, do not be afraid, Mary, for God has found favor with you. 
Listen, we are loved. We are loved. And we are loved by the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit. We are loved. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And he will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter what we do. And in these trials, when you're accused of stuff or you're lied about, or things are being said falsely about you, all right? You don't need to go out on a vindication war, okay? Your actions speak for themselves, and sometimes your reaction speaks more of who you are. And it says right here that we have been favored by God. Jesus Christ died for us. He loves us. And so I'm here to tell you that when it feels like no one else loves you, Jesus loves you. And when it feels like no one else is going to be there, Jesus is going to be there. He's never left. And, I, and these aren't just words. These are actual biblical truths. So when we feel like we're being lied about, when we feel like we're being accused of stuff, you can weather the storm because you know the truth of all truths is right there beside you. And Jesus Christ is going to protect you if we do it the way that he's directing us to do. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. When this was said, it's, I'm sure the entire universe went silent when they said the name Jesus. And the reason why is because he is to be praised. He, it is the only name that salvation can be found through. That, what a monumental name. What a beautiful name, like the song says, huh? And anyone and everyone, you hear what I said? Anyone, okay, there's no exclusions. And everyone, there's no failure, who has ever called upon the name of Jesus Christ has been saved. Huh? Isn't that great? So that's the name that we're calling out to. That's who's on our side. And it says that he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There will be no end. Your son is going to do great things. And if you get lied about here, that's part of the journey. But you have to be the, Mary's being told you have to be the vehicle to get this child here. All right? Great responsibility. And that goes with us. We've talked about ministry. Owning your ministry. Owning it. Find your ministry and own it. Go out and do it. Serve in the way that you're being called. And people will talk about you. People will lie about you. You will rub people wrong. You will have disturbances with people. It's part of it. Okay? That's when you grow. When you have to be humble and say, hey, I messed up. Maybe you messed up. I'm sorry. I love you. Let's get back. And sometimes the relationships are stronger, if not all the time, the relationships are stronger than they were on the front side of the mess up. And that's because of who is involved here, Jesus Christ. All right, our forgiveness and our salvation. Here's another one. When we are filled with doubt. None of us like to admit that we get filled with doubt, but let's just be honest, we get filled with doubt, right? Everybody deals with doubt. And it can be a, you know, a heavy load, or it can be just a, one of the, like you got a rock in your shoe, like a little pebble. You ever had a pebble in your shoe? If you're stand, sitting still, it doesn't bother you, right? But you take a uh, walk to the fridge and back, kind of annoying. You got to walk to town and back, you're going to end up in the ER, right? So it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Okay, so there is the, there is the starting spot. Is that should just vanquish all doubt in our minds because we are loved by a God. We are the child of a God who can make anything happen. And then she says, behold, this maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And this is something that we talk about all the time. Here I am, God, send me. Put the cross put my cross in front of me and then allow me and be with me as I pick it up each and every day and carry it. We are to be living sacrifices. That means that we have 
given up our lives for his life for us and live. And, you know, sometimes it might just be easier just to be a sacrifice because you get kind of put out of your misery and you don't have to do it again, right? And go to heaven. But a living sacrifice, that's, that's everyday kind of stuff. You got to get up and go out and live it. Get up and go out and live it. Get up, go out and live it. That's an everyday thing. And then sometimes there's days where we leave the cross at home and we don't reflect our ministry. We don't reflect who we are or who we're supposed to be. It happens. But that's not defeat. That's just failure. Like the great basketball coach said, you either win or you learn. There's no defeat. There's no, there's no losing. If you do it right, you either win or you learn. And sometimes the learning only takes place in the losing. Huh? Life came from, in order for a seed to produce life, what do you have to do? Bury it. Isn't that amazing? Out of death comes life. Huh? And I'm thankful. Out of the curse comes the blessing. That's biblical, huh? That's great. And then here's the other thing, and this is, this is so important. This is a two-sided coin, obviously, all right? And we need to hit both sides here. God will send who we need. This is how Luke earlier in the chapter, so it was, and the angels had gone away from heaven. The shepherds showed up. Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came and with haste and found Mary and Joseph in a babe lying in a manger. They, the shepherds showed up to help, to protect, to glorify his name. And um, that's what we need in our lives. Encouragers. People who are there to worship with us. People who are there to, um, you know, laugh with us, cry with us. We need shepherds in our lives. Okay? And then in order to have shepherds in our lives, guess what you and me have to do? Be shepherds in other people's lives. We got to show up for them. We got to, you know, that may require you to put on actual clothing and leave the house, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Sometimes that's the deal breaker, right? You want to go to dinner? Sure. You got to have to take your sweatpants off. Well, no, we're probably not going to go then. I mean, that's just where we are sometimes. But I'm telling you, we need shepherds in our lives. And then we're required to be shepherds in other people's lives. And this is the wise men. They came and, and um, fell down and worshipped him. And our, no, this is still the shepherds. So, and when they had opened their treasures, uh, no, this is the wise men. They presented him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we need people who, we need wise men, first of all, people who give good advice and are wise. Okay? It helps to have some wise people around. There's, here's the other thing is that you have to accept them. So you have to listen to them. You have to accept their advice for what it is. And then also, we need people to bring their gifts. You know what I mean? You know what your gift is? That's your ministry. That's the thing that God's placed in your life to use to help others. It's your ministry. Not all of us have accept our ministry. Okay? Sometimes it takes a while. Trust me. Sometimes it's not what we want. Trust me. Sometimes it's not anything we would ask for. I understand. Trust me. Okay? But here's the thing. We got to do it. And then we got to go out and present them with our gift. And the gifts have to be accepted. And, the, and here's what I mean by that. Is sometimes I talk to people and I say, let us know if we can do something for you. And they say, okay. With 100% knowing they would never call and ask for help. But those are the same people that are the first ones to call and offer help sometimes. And you have to be willing to accept help sometimes. You just have to. 
people have, if, if we're going to ask people to express their gifts, then we need to be the kind of people who will accept it. That's where the growth comes from church-wide. That's where relationships happen. If we're all just here and we're all one-on-one -on -one basketball players or one-on-one -on -one Christian players, there's no team. There's no team. It's just a bunch of people playing one-on-one -on -one and can't do it. Christianity is a team sport. It's a family. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't have answers on some of this stuff. I just know that the Bible asks, be faithful and look to Jesus Christ. That's the answer that it gives us. And you know what? Here's the truth, okay? Here's the hard truth that I have to tell you. That's enough. You know why, how I know that? Because it says his grace is sufficient. All right. I asked three times, he said no, and his grace is sufficient. So if you're dealing with a trial or a tribulation, read this story. Think about what the people who were in this story were going through, the stuff that was laid upon them. I mean, this is, this is big time stuff. And think about the advice, think about the, the words that are told to these people, and then apply that in our lives. I mean, you have a 14, 15 year old girl telling her you're getting ready to be pregnant with the king of kings. And I mean, and, and then Joseph, you know, he's supposed to just accept that. And I mean, there's just a lot going on here. These guys were going through some serious trials of doubt and no answers and afraid and people probably were you know, you know one of the most mentioned um, sins in the Bible? Probably mentioned, if not second, the most, gossip. God hates gossip. Because the, and the, the only protection is for the people spreading the gossip. They're the ones protected. Well, I can't tell you who told me this, but let me tell you the awful thing that they told me. Okay? But... I mean, there was probably some gossip going around, and this was probably a trying time, but they got through it because Jesus Christ brought them through it. And I'm telling you this morning, if you're going through a tough time, you know, sometimes the solution isn't there, but the peace, the comfort, the salve, it's there. Thank you for tuning in to Star Church's Sermon. We truly hope that the sermon edified you today and brought you closer to the Lord. For more information about Star Church, visit our website at stargbchurch.com. Once again, that's stargbchurch.com. If you would like to visit our church, our address is 4925 State Road 142, El Dorado, Illinois 62930. We now pray that God will bless you as you enter the mission field and bring his word to the world. And as always, we will see you next time here at Star Church.